Hi, I'm Lauren Seidel-Baker, an economist here at ITR Economics, and I am so excited to present to you today Tools for Seeing the Future. This is our methodology, the fundamental basis, how we calculate our, our forecast and really how we look at any indicator, be it your business or something bigger, gross domestic product, industrial production, a, a major sector of the economy. But I'd like to look at this information today as if it was a business. So I'll call this my business, Lauren Incorporated. I probably have a sense of my sales. I should be tracking that on a monthly basis, but there's a really interesting story going on behind the scenes. And it's our job to get at that story, to see what's really happening here that's not easily uh, discernible at first glance. So let's do a few things to manipulate this data. I promise there's no high level math. This is simple calculations. We're going to start just by getting a smoothed out version of what's going on in my monthly sales data. So I'll do that first by calculating a three month moving total or three MMT as I have abbreviated here. This is just a very simple sum. I'll take my past three months of sales data, add them together, and that gives me a quarterly idea of how much have I sold or uh, what should I be uh, looking at on a, a smoothed out version? None of that month to month volatility where some sales could maybe get pulled into a month or pushed out to another. But I don't want to stop there. Once I have this monthly total, I can calculate my first rate of change. I call that a three over 12 rate of change. The three stands for three months of data and over 12 means I'm always comparing back 12 months or one year. So in this example, I'll take my March 2021 three month moving total and I'll compare it back to the March 2020 3 MMT. This tells me that it, again, if this is my business, I sold 9.5% more in the last three months than I did in the same three months one year ago. Now I'm always going back one year. There are a few reasons for that. The most important of which is I take out any seasonality. A lot of folks ask, is this uh, methodology, does it still work if my business is seasonal, if I have a busy season and a slow season? And it absolutely does because we're always looking back to the same three months. So I'm comparing busy season to busy season or slow season to slow season, and I'm getting a more apples to apples comparison. But let's not stop here. Let's take this methodology one step further, and that's to do the same exact calculations on an annual basis. So I'll start with my 12 month moving total or 12 MMT. Um, this is again, a simple sum of the past 12 months of my data. And I hope this is something you're already calculating in your business. Uh, some folks might call it a trailing 12. I'm sure it's a metric you're familiar with, but where many businesses stop is that right here at that 12 month moving total, they don't take this methodology, that last step to calculate the 12 over 12 rate of change to get that view of what's happening annually in the business. So again, for example, if this is my data, I can see that I'm down 2.2% in the last 12 months compared to one year ago. That gives me an idea of where things stand today, but it also gives me a little bit of a track record. I can see that even though my data is below last year's level, I'm getting less and less negative. If I look back to August or September, I was down almost 5% from the year ago level. So it seems like my business is, is getting maybe not better yet, but at least less bad. Here are the formulas for those rates of change. Again, this is no high level calculus. This is just simple addition and division. Um, put this into an Excel spreadsheet and, and I really do encourage you, take this to your own business because you'll get a lot of powerful information. Now the 312 is interesting. That 1212 is probably where I spend more of my focus as an economist because that 1212 rate of change is where we determine uh, where your company is in the business cycle. So I have this stylized line that represents my 12-12 rate of change. Wherever that number is, it will always be somewhere on this line in one of these phases. Whether it's positive or negative, whether it's rising or declining, it will be in one of these four business cycle phases. So maybe it's negative and rising as my example just showed. That would be what we call phase A, a recovery phase of the business cycle. That leads to the best phase, phase B. We want to know when we make that shift 
because we as a business should be making very different decisions if we're in, say, phase B and growth is accelerating, or maybe phase D, the recession phase of the business. We just should be behaving differently. So the first step is knowing where we are. But after that, the next step is determining what comes next. You can see that this business cycle naturally leads from one phase to the next. So we want to be looking not just at where we stand today, but at what comes next, what's around the corner. That's how you make the business cycle decisions to outperform during any phase of the cycle. Now we can use these rates of change to, to start to get a glimpse, not just of where we are today and not just of what phase should come next, but really we can peek around the corner just a little bit more. So I want to show you a, a sample data series here. This uh, isn't a real company, but um, it could be. And I've cut the chart off here in, in mid-2006. So bring yourself back mentally to 2006 when things probably felt pretty good if you were in business at the time. I know it was a while ago, but we'll try to remember back. 2006, um, iPods are big. It, it was a great time. And if this is my business, I can see that my sales are rising. If I only calculate that 12 month moving total, that trailing 12, I'm probably pretty happy because I can see that my sales are at a record high, they're still rising, and I probably feel great. But if I'm calculating my rates of change as well, um, here I have that 312 graphed in orange and the 1212 in blue, I'm going to get a better peek around the corner than many of my competitors. 2006, we're feeling good. Fast forward to 2007, we're feeling even better. And if I'm following the rates of change, maybe I'm not feeling better. Even though my sales 12 MMT is at a record high, I have a powerful red flag waving from my own data. I haven't done any forecasting here, anything beyond that simple methodology, that easy math that I just showed you. But I can see that my 312 is now declining and critically it has downward passed my 1212. When I see those two lines cross, that is a, a blazing caution signal to me. Because that 312, it shows the much more immediate momentum. It shows that my business maybe isn't in that ongoing, rising, accelerating trend for much longer. And in fact, I hope I heeded that warning because my sales, in fact, do drop off in 2008, 2009. Now, if I'm following the rates of change, I would have watched that 312 lead the 1212 the whole way down to the trough here in 2009. And I would have seen there is ongoing pain coming. I would know that at least for the next couple of quarters, we're not at the bottom yet. We need to be taking those you know, good management decisions, being cautious, uh, maybe it's watching costs, whatever it is that we're doing at the time to set ourselves up because we might not be able to change the overall economic cycle, but we certainly can respond to it. Let's fast forward again. Here it is, early 2010. And uh, if you were in business at the time, things didn't feel so great. Um, you were probably a little bit more pessimistic. I know the headlines certainly were. It, it seemed like the sky was falling and there just was no bottom to be seen. I can see that in my sales 12 MMT on the bottom here. But again, if I'm watching my rates of change, this is when I get my positive signal. This is a green flag waving because my orange line, my three, uh, 312 rate of change has now upward past the 1212. That's a signal for me that I need to be investing. I need capacity, I need people, I need equipment, whatever it is that my business needs to be ready to hit the ground running because this rate of change signature from my own data tells me that growth is just around the corner. And sure enough, it was in this case, if you had been following your rates of change, you would have known that ahead of time. We follow these rates of change through the upside, through the downside. It's a great peek around the corner at what's coming next for your business and how you can plan for it. So this rate of change methodology gives you not just a view of where your business is today or where your sector is, where the macro economy is, but also a glimpse into the future. That's why we use it here at ITR. And I would encourage you, try it out. You have the data, you have everything you need. I gave you the formulas, give it a shot. See what you can find, what you can glean about the future. And please give us a call at ITR if we can be of any help.